Time to recognize the gentleman from Oklahoma, Mr. Brickeen, for five minutes for questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think I jumped in front of the chairman on that, but, but thank you very much. Um, Director Young, I appreciate you being here. Um, I want to provide some quotes uh, from uh, former President Bill Clinton. Uh, a decade ago, Clinton stated that he raised the corporate tax to reduce the deficit. Specifically, he stated, quote, I raised the corporate tax to international average to make a contribution to drive down the debt, end of quote. Uh, similarly, uh, in 1993, President Clinton, um, advocating for the BTU tax, in his own words, he said he was advocating for it, quote, as the best way to provide us with revenue to lower the deficit. So you notice in both those quotes, one was, I'm doing this about the debt, I'm doing this about the deficit. Democrats once held a goal to reduce deficit loading with their tax increases. Um, in this budget uh, proposed by President Biden that you're managing over, the leader of the Democrat Party, President Biden, wants to increase taxes by $5 trillion in this budget, but I don't see it being used at all to, to reduce the deficit. Let me kind of back that up. According to the CBO, the debt held by the public will increase by $18 trillion if nothing changes. That's the CBO baseline from current spending habits. Um, with this plan, with the Biden plan, $5 trillion is going to be raised in taxes, um, tax increases, yet the $18 trillion in additional debt loading over the 10-year window will also occur. That means with y'all's budget, with Biden's budget, $5 trillion worth of tax increases borne by Americans over the next 10 years will go to increase spending, but it, it does nothing to address deficits and debt. Um, and so, you know, you know I, I appreciate anyone who wants to talk about hypocrisy among the Republican Party. I welcome that. So I want to say this subtly and tactfully. I just want you to, and just, this is kind of a rhetorical question. Where did the ideology of Bill Clinton for, for, for presidents, the ideology of, of Democrat presidents go where once upon a time they would say, we want tax increases, but we're going to use it because we really think that debt and deficits um, are an issue. Tax increases, spending increases, and yet no deficit reduction is in President Biden's plan. He has said, President Biden said, show me your budget and I will show you your values. The Biden administration values in this are clear. I don't, I don't see deficit and debt reduction as, as, a, as a part of, of true emphasis. Radical tax and spend, no deficit reduction. When, when Democrat-leaning constituents back home ask me, while we don't raise taxes on the top 1% to pay down the debt, I go through some, some stats to back up what has been twisted about what they're told. According to the Tax Foundation, the top 1% already pay 46% of all income taxes. That's the top revenue stream coming into the Fed. 46% of all income taxes are already borne by the top 1%. Further, you take the top 50% of all income earners, they pay 97% of all income taxes. That means that the bottom 50% of income earners pay 2.3% of all taxes. So, so in this this tax the wealthy mentality. We've got to make sure that people understand the stats and the truth of those stats. The Democrats in Oklahoma think that this administration would raise taxes to address debt loading, but this budget shows that debt and deficit reduction is not really a priority for you all. That is a radical ideology that is leading this administration, and again, tactfully, that really saddens me. Um, again, I ask you, where has the ideology of Bill Clinton gone for this Democrat president, and what, 30 years ago, Democrats were focused on debt and deficit spending. Look, both parties are to blame. Um, Republicans, I'll be the first to chastise us when we talk about um, fiscal discipline, and we don't adhere to it, but I'm doing this subtly just to say, man, I'm concerned about where the Democrat party has drifted on once being so focused on debt and deficit. Let me kind of close with this. This budget, it has radical climate priorities and in increased $5 trillion in spending. Housing cost increases. The budget calls for a new program that seeks to provide families with $10,000 total mortgage credit over the next two years. That proposal is going to cost $47 billion. That's totally unpaid for deficit spending, adding on the $34 trillion. It's going to lead to an increase in home prices because deficit spending drives inflation, devaluation of our currency. That's where interest rates are coming from, the interest rate increase. The cost of median homes on average right now are $100,000 more. You look at different statistics than they were before President Biden took office. 
The average median house is $100,000 more, yet, yet the average income for these same families in the last three years has only risen by about $10,000. The average 30-year mortgage is almost $1,000 more under, before this administration to, to now. So I'm gonna wrap it up by saying this. I believe your budget is compounding the problems you claim to, to say you're trying to fix. Where is this administration's focus on debt and de deficit reduction? Page 139 of the budget. Deficit reduced by $3 trillion from baseline to policy. The debt number on policy on baseline is $48.3 trillion in 2034. Policy, $45.1 trillion, $3 trillion less. In, in all due respect, the 10-year window of CBO says 18.9 is where because we're going to be. Because they don't look at policy. They look at baseline. But y'all's budget says we're going to be at 18.2. I mean, it, it's $18 trillion with y'all's budget versus CBO. And so to, to try to wordsmith these different numbers... I just don't see. I appreciate the, value of debt the exchange. Thank it's you, Mr. Chairman.